Good morning to you. Welcome to Morning in America. The FDA now expected to approve a, quote, mix and match approach for COVID booster shots, giving doctors and vaccinators more flexibility. So those already vaccinated will be able to receive a different COVID booster shot than their original. Uh, the New York Times reports that the FDA is not recommending one shot over another, but that this move may reduce the appeal of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which we've heard a lot of headlines surrounding the one-dose shot uh, not lasting as long in the system as the two-dose shots from Moderna and Pfizer. Uh, again, Moderna and Johnson & Johnson's boosters are expected to get the FDA stamp of approval by tomorrow evening. We want to bring in Dr. David Trotter, Chair of Emergency Medicine at Advocate Illinois Medical Center. So this mix and match story, it's like, for the love of Pete, let's just say it and make it really plain. You do not have to stick with the brand name of your vaccine and match it to your booster. You can really have whatever booster you want. Yes, that is that is correct. That's what the studies are actually showing uh, a very robust response. Uh, no matter if you got the Johnson and Johnson first, and let's say you got Moderna or Pfizer, you're having a robust response to that vaccine. Mm -hmm. That's been shown to be very effective. We were talking to a doctor, uh, I want to say Monday, and it was uh, a matter of the dosage not lasting as long in your body if you receive the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. But we want to be very clear: it doesn't stop the efficacy of the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. It's just that you got a second dose, so there's something fresh in your system, right? Yeah, that's that's more a uh, better way to think about it. You know, you still have a very effective vaccine with that one dose, mm -hmm. but the same token, if you get that second dose, you get into a different level of protection. And I think that's what everyone's trying to yeah. really get a hold of here. You want to be right. best protected. Right. Rather than kind of saying, oh, no, don't get the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. That's not what we're saying. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people talking about COVID and those who are unvaccinated because of Colin, uh, Colin Powell's death. Uh, Monday, we reported this. He was vaccinated. He had a breakthrough case. He also had pre existing conditions. But I mean, even in Sacramento, California, they were marching yesterday for their rights to remain unvaccinated, for not being forced to take the vaccine. What do you say to those who say it should still be about choice? It's not about protection, it's more about someone's liberties. Well, you know, I tell everyone that still is doubting the vaccine just to really look at the data. You know, the studies here in America and all over the world are showing the same thing, that vaccines are the safest and most effective way to prevent serious disease and death. And so those vaccine doubters really should talk to their physician. They should ask those type of questions and they will really come to a better informed decision. Are you surprised when uh, people are actually using uh, the case of somebody dying who was vaccinated as an argument for the fact that it doesn't really matter if you get vaccinated or not? You know, it, it's really sad to hear those type of stories. You know, no one, especially in the medical community, no one that wants to see someone pass away, uh, especially from this virus. And so we should actually be using this as an opportunity to really promote the vaccine even more. You know, for patients that have some sort of uh, cancer or some sort of immunosuppressive therapy, you know, the vaccine is not always as effective. Right. And so we really need to take that as just an example of getting that third dose of vaccine. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Trotter. And again, everything in context, uh, Colin Powell had pre-existing conditions. Thank you.